Welcome, in this lecture I'll teach you what smart objects are and how they can be used in your projects. Smart objects are a layer type in Photoshop, among raster, shape, type and adjustment layers. You can identify them by checking their thumbnail in the layers panel. This is their distinctive symbol. Their main characteristic is that they hold on to all the pixel information inside a layer, thus allowing for lots of editing without permanently modifying the pixel content. On screen we have two seemingly identical layers. The one on the left is a smart object and the one on the right is a regular raster layer. Let's select them both and resize them to about 10%. Now let's enlarge them back to their original form. I'll use Ctrl T once again. The smart object is impeccable, while the raster layer looks terrible. That's because Photoshop was instructed to keep all this information by having this layer as a smart object. Please note that when you use Ctrl T on a raster layer, when you resize it and you hit enter, that's the new 100% value. To showcase this change, check the options bar. I'll now shrink it to around 80%. Now I'll hit enter. Next, I'll enter free transform mode yet again, but notice we have 100% here instead of 80%. That's because raster layers are inferior in this aspect to smart objects. They lose all those pixels and thus Photoshop sees this as a brand new layer, albeit with less pixels. On the other hand, if we repeat the process on this smart object, you'll see Photoshop remembers what value we put in. In this case, that's 80%. And that's really useful in many situations. Furthermore, smart objects allow you to apply filters non-destructively. Here I'll add a Gaussian blur to my raster layer. Give me a moment while I do this. Once I commit to this effect, that's it, there's no turning back. As you can see, the layers panel shows no effect, I can toggle on or off. If we switch to the smart object and apply the same filter through the hotkey Control alt f we'll see there's nothing to worry about. My layers panel is going to show me that I've applied a filter to this smart object and I can toggle its visibility. Just to reiterate, this is only available for smart objects, but here's the great thing. All layer types can be converted. So if I add a rectangle on my screen and I want to use the same filter on it, I'll first right click it in the layers panel and choose convert to smart object. So that's fantastic because all layer types in Photoshop can be changed to work in this mode. The downside is that you can't directly edit smart objects. If we grab a brush, you'll see a forbidden sign on the canvas. So as smart as they are, they don't allow this type of editing that a raster layer would have no problems with. OK, you probably knew these facts from a previous lecture, but now it gets interesting. By default, when you drag and drop a new image in Photoshop, that will automatically be placed as a smart object. On the other hand, if you're used to using Illustrator, you may want to import some graphics from it. Here's one design I like to use in Photoshop. Use Ctrl C to copy it and go back. You may feel a little delay when you switch between programs, but don't worry, it'll soon pass. After you hit Ctrl V to paste, you'll be able to place that design as various types, but I always recommend you go for the Smart Object option. That's going to provide you with the best result, no matter the design. One last feature I'd like to showcase is the ability to retain your Smart Object's free transform settings. Let me show you an example. I'll add two layers on my canvas. One of them will be a regular raster layer, while the other one is going to be a smart object. Next, I'll go to town on this raster one. I'll enter free transform mode and I'll change its perspective. I'll also rotate it, just so we can have another transformation. Lastly, I'll use the distort command by holding down control. OK, fast forward and I've completely changed this raster layer. Give me a moment while I do the same to the smart object. I want a similar effect, but I won't strive to get a perfect replica as that's not the point. Luckily, I can speed up the recording so you don't have to watch me go through the same steps yet again. OK, here we are. Say I want to adjust this raster layer just a little bit, maybe work on its perspective, right? If I use Ctrl T on it, I can see all my work has gone away. This transformation box shows as if this is a regular rectangle, so I'll have to start from scratch. On the other hand, if you enter free transform mode here, you'll see how everything is exactly as I left it. That's immensely powerful because you can revisit an older project, whether it's been an hour or a year, and continue to edit it from where you left off. That's the power of smart objects. We still have a long way to go, but we'll take it step by step. OK, that wraps up this lecture. I'll see you soon.